recruiting guys and getting guys on your team who are winners and who have come from winning programs. Uh, and it says a lot about the staff before uh, this one that they did a great job of, of seeking out winners, seeking out guys who have uh, been on really good teams. And, and, you know, I think that helps us as we go into the future. What are a few offensive players that might have given the future defensive backs a bit of a problem so far? Well, of course, rising is always a challenge, you know, to be able to cover. Uh, covering him on post routes and covering him, uh, you know, on those deeper balls is a challenge for us. Uh, and it's been fun to watch those guys, the guys in my group, compete. Uh, Zuber, uh, even though he's not out there, his uh, his verbal abuse, you know what I mean? So he, he's able to help our guys be able to uh, understand uh, the process of blocking out the noise because, you know, if the wide receivers catch a two-yard smoke screen, Zuber is out there on the field as if they just, you know, won the Super Bowl. So, uh, but it's been a lot of fun, like I said, to watch the guys compete, uh, to see them get better day after day. Because that's right now, you know, in the spring, that's what you're, that's what we're doing it for. There's no game. Uh, so we just want to see a progression, guys getting better, continuing to learn and understand the defense uh, and take coaching. From a philosophy perspective, are you more of a believer in having a, you know, a boundary corner and a near side corner, or do you move guys around on matchups? Which is, is more comfortable for you? Well, well, it really depends on, on your level of talent. Sure. You know, when, when you, know, you have a guy with a lot of experience, um, a guy – that you know you can depend on because many times on offense they'll put their guy, their stud, into the boundary. And so you take your guy and put him into the boundary. Uh, but where we are right now, you know, we're just trying to get lined up. Of course. And uh, we don't know where the field or the boundary is right now. Uh, and and we're, just, we're just working to that end to be able to understand the defense. But as you progress and you really see a decisive difference between your players, and yeah, that's something that I've that I've done, especially in the fact that you know uh, the Big 12 is a is a is a fast, fast, fast league, uh, and if you can um, be able to align your align your guys, and they know play after play the things that the opponent will give them into their boundary from an offensive attack standpoint, and then those guys into the field, and then they're able to communicate with the players who are most often into the boundary with them. Uh, I think you give yourself an advantage defensively. Yeah. Lance Robinson is a guy who played some in the nickel, some on the outside. He even played some safety in high school. Like, mm -hmm. Where do you see him fit in best in your secondary? Well, he's in the last few days, he's worked with the corners. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we, we just have, as a staff, thought about the fact that we just want to give this guy an opportunity to settle in somewhere because you just said it. He's, he's done a lot. You know, he's he's been a jack of a many trades. And we want to find the place within this defensive scheme that, that suits his youth and experience uh, as well as his talent level right now to be able to put us in the best and him in the best position for success. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on A.J. Parker? Uh, someone asked me about him earlier, and uh, I just feel like he's, at this time, he's the guy who is who is above and beyond, you know, the rest of the guys. Now he's played a lot of football, you know, and so uh, when I when I line him up as a coach, he's played. So a lot of the, even though it's a new scheme for him, he understands it. It's just like, you know, it's just oh, this is just like what we did two years ago. This is just like, well, when you have a guy like Cameron Key who doesn't have as much experience, he doesn't have the just likes or, or echo. Yeah, they don't have those things yet. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm excited, most excited about his level of experience. And then, you know, the thing is with him is that he wants to be, he wants to be better. He wants to be really good. And so he does those things. He does the extra things, extra film work, uh, after practice, before practice. And so I'm excited about that as a coach. And what about uh, Walter Neal? You know, uh, Scotty Hazleton is a strong guy, you know what I mean? And so we've had some arm wrestle contests um, for Walter. He's playing nickel right now. He's coached by uh, Scotty, works with the linebackers in the box quite often. But I think Walter would be a dynamic corner. Um, he'd be a dynamic corner. He's a dynamic nickel. So there's a constant struggle, right, for me to be able to steal him. Uh, what I want to do is go in and get all his pads, change his number, change his name on his locker, and just pretend he's a new guy. Uh, I don't know if that'll work. What about uh, but, but, 